Hi, this is Chippy from UMC Portal. Uh, I've got uh, no, this is not uh, cartoon time on UMC Portal. This is the Toki Doki cover on the Fujitsu Lux UB50N, which is the Japanese version of the U820 and the U2010 Fujitsu. It's a UMPC with the uh, convertible screen and notebook style form factor. And it's not new, it's been out since um, I think about August 2008 and there's even been a new model of this announced. This one's got the 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom inside, 1 gig of RAM, 120 gig hard drive, um, 5.6 inch 1280 by I believe 768 screen. Um, it's pretty highly specified UMPC and it's not cheap but um, the reason I want to take you around it six months after it's been launched is because I've installed a uh, Windows 7 on the device and it was a good device before running Windows 7 pretty flexible but this has really uh, taken it up to a new level so I want to quickly show you so before I do that let me just quickly take you around the device it's an um, incredibly light device and, and brilliantly engineered I have to say uh, quickly go around, around the device here there's a um, radio on off button there's a power switch here and there's a CF card slot uh, in here. I don't personally use CF card slots but I know a lot of photographers do and uh, at the same time as using CF they also use SD as a, as a backup so it writes to both SD and CF on some cameras so this one if you turn it around has the SD slot on the other side so this is actually a pretty good device for uh, um, pro-am professional photographers. A microphone, headphone, USB 2, Kensington port lock, lanyard holes on the corner here and then at the front here is a rocker switch for the volume and you push it in for mute. On the front we've got um, the docking port power and docking port extender ports that slots into the docking port really easily. Some lights on the front here usual setup there and on the back there's a 20 watt hour battery so it's about 60% the size of a small battery that you'll find on a netbook. Um, also on the front above this uh, Toki Doki designed uh, cover you can also get this in a whole range of colors um, and I should mention this is from Connex.net who have given me this as a long-term loaner device um, they've actually got the 2 gigahertz version of this right now in some really nice uh, colors. Um, there are some buttons here but I'm going to show you those in a minute after I open it up. So Windows 7 installed on this now, it takes about 8 gig on the install and uh, it worked pretty well so the install was fairly straightforward I had to install one display driver to get uh, the display working at the proper resolution and then a Windows update uh, updating some software from the Fujitsu website everything seems to be working including the fingerprint reader so you can log straight in with the fingerprint reader and uh, that was working out of the box the brightness is working the screen rotation is working uh, all the keys and buttons are working for example the little lights there that you'll see go on and off very handy for using this uh, in bed. <laughs> the mouse pointer is working, um, web camera is working, audio is working, all the slots are working and the auto rotation is working as well. And I'm going to do that now and show you these buttons at the top. You'll see this auto rotate so it's, it's flipped 180 and now we're in a position where we can use this as a, a tablet device because you've got Mouse pointer on the top right hand side here, mouse buttons left and right on the left hand side, and a whole suite of function buttons. And these buttons actually change when you rotate the device. The definition of these buttons change. Long and short presses give uh, different things, and it's all configurable. And this is really, really handy uh, for, for tablet users. For example, push the middle button, and the 
a handwriting recognition pa- panel comes up, the, the tip is commonly known as, and you can switch that to the very useful, I have to say, Windows 7 on-screen keyboard. Stylus down here on the bottom left, so you're, uh, you're away very easily uh, in tablet mode. And let's just um, use Firefox here. So I've got uh, Firefox 3 installed, of course. Uh, running in the background, I've got Google Talk and uh, Skype as well. Now, it's a fairly sort of typical installation, I would say, for a mobile uh, computer, Skype running, Firefox, Google Talk. And I've been running in the background Perfmon to track over the last hour and a half the battery utilization. And I want to show you that, that graph right now and should give you the average. So the average over the last hour and a half, and if you can see the graph there, I've been using it fairly heavily in the last half an hour, is 6.8 watts drain. Uh, now that wasn't idle, that was used all the time, so that, that's actually a very, very good figure. It's three hours of online usage uh, over Wi-Fi in use. Uh, that figure, if you look at some of the lower figures on the graph here, you might not even be able to see them, but the low point of this graph is around the three and a half watt level. So in idle, this thing will actually last for something like five hours. Uh, if you switch the screen off and just run it as a Skype terminal uh, in the background, this is going to last for over five or six hours, which is really significant. It's a device you could actually leave on all day and use as a kind of a, a communicator notifier. But anyway, uh, I want to maybe quickly show you a few uh, uh, things running in, um, f sorry, in Windows Seven. And uh, unfortunately, the let's see if I can find a little bit. Ah, oh, you can see it there. That's okay. So it's going to be difficult for me to demo it because the uh, the angle for my fingers is not very right here. But we've got drag and grab installed on Google Reader here, and uh, sorry, Google, um, sorry, Firefox. And that was uh, Google Search, and uh, everything seems to be working pretty smoothly. This is a hard drive in here. Uh, which is not the fastest hard drive. For example, the Umid uh, is, is quite a bit faster than this one to start up applications, but it's certainly not slow. And the 120 gig drive on here means you can actually use it uh, for uh, media pretty well. And in fact, uh, after I show you some, some browsing speeds, we'll, we'll do a little bit on the, uh, on the media side of things. So uh, let's go to a website. This is a UMPC website, it's called umpcportal.com, <laughs> as you might know. Uh, everything is working quite nicely on this, and pretty speedily as well. 1.6 gigahertz processor is uh, really helping to render those pages quickly once they've been downloading. Grab and drag is working nicely as well. Let's go to uh, YouTube and... Um, I'll show you some uh, videos. I haven't actually been to YouTube on this install yet, I don't think. But we'll see how that goes. Try and get that in focus. And we'll just pick up the first video there. I've obviously installed Flash. So this will be a low bit rate. Hey, it's the push mode. How did it know I like the push mode? That's cookies for you. Right, so this is a normal quality, and that's working perfectly. Let's go full screen. So going full screen on that is not too good. Uh, that was actually high high quality. No, it wasn't high quality. Let's switch to high quality. See how that looks. High quality windowed is working. Full screen, I doubt it's going to be that good. Sorry, high quality again, and then put that full screen. Dun -dun, that's loading, buffering. Sorry, well, one thing I can point out here then is the uh, glossy screen, that's not too good. Doesn't look like this is buffering actually. So that's network problems rather than uh, video 
playback issues. Let's try and find another another example here. So, I think we can probably safely say that windowed stuff is working, full screen is a little bit of an issue maybe. I have this device running in balanced mode, so uh, it's going up to 1.6 GHz if needed. The speaker on this isn't that brilliant, it's pretty quiet, it's just a tiny little speaker here. My only complaint of the uh, device. Um, so that's uh, web browsing, but let's uh, let's do something else here, and we'll kick off uh, media player, where I've got some uh, some videos pre-installed that I want to uh, demo here. So we can do something that should work, that works on a netbook. It doesn't really work very well on on this, and this is a Coral Reef Adventures. Uh, it looks looks viewable, but it's actually losing quite a few frames there. I'd say losing 40, 50 percent of frames, and it's actually gone out of sync with the audio as well. Let's go back to the library. I want to show you H264. This is an H264 video. And this is working pretty well. In fact, it's working perfectly. And um, once you've seen that working, I can tell you that it's actually a 1080p video. 1920 wide, 10, uh, 1080, or is it 1280 high? Being squashed down for this, of course. 12 and a half megabits a second. This is actually being done in hardware. This is the first time I've used a PC on the with the Poulsbo chipset that's been able to do hardware decoding of H.264 out of the box. This is quite significant. Uh, I've put it on an external screen and the quality is, uh, is quite stunning to be honest. And this is without any tweaks at all. Uh, it's a downloaded video from the internet and it's working really nicely. Hardware decoding is not working for Windows Media Video or uh, DivX. Um, Although the chipset is capable of supporting it. I'm quite surprised about that because I thought <laughs> Microsoft would have actually sorted Windows Media Video out before H.264, but it seems not. Maybe it's an Intel driver issue. Let me get this full screen. This is a 6.5 megabit per second DivX file. Working perfectly. And my camera in the background. Not so good, huh? Anyway, uh, video performance is, uh, I have to say, excellent. So, uh, screen rotation is working well. So, let's flip this into um, rotated mode. And now we've got ourselves a. Oh, let's just push the rotation button again. Get that around to normal setting. I'm left handed, so I'll hold it in the right hand. Everything's working. The touch point, uh, sorry, the, the mouse. He says the mouse is working. Yes, the mouse is working. And uh, actually, as a, like a Google Reader device, this is pretty good. In fact, uh, as I mentioned in idle, this goes down to really low uh, battery drain rate. So this would actually last about four, maybe five hours as an ebook reader. The only thing about it is that the screen is seems to have uh, some sort of filter on it that actually affects the quality of the uh, screen if you don't look at it head on. I think this is something they've done to enhance the uh, brightness when you look at it straight on. Um, but keep the backlight levels down. It's a, maybe a little trick they've done, but it what you do have to do is make sure you look at it head on otherwise the quality of the screen deteriorates rapidly 
But I really like the way that the uh, rotation is quick, it's working, it's reliable, and uh, when you flip it back, everything flips back to, to normal. Standby works uh, perfectly, hibernation works perfectly. Uh, I haven't actually found anything that's not working apart from tap to click on the mouse pointer. It's something I'm used to having used touch pointers in the past. Um, some people don't even know that it's possible, but you can actually tap to do a left mouse click. Um, the software for the mouse pointer didn't seem to install properly. Despite it running in the background now, it doesn't seem to be working. That shut down okay. Of course, um, when you open the screen, it's only maybe four or five seconds away from uh, bringing up XP again. Sorry, XP, Windows Vista. Uh, maybe a bit longer. Eight. Oh no, that was still shutting down. That was still going into standby. So let's just test the coming out of standby. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven seconds, one swipe, and we're in. So, uh, one gigabyte of RAM on Windows, Vista, uh, Windows 7 seems to be working okay. Um, I haven't been pushing it um, too hard, but uh, running Skype, uh, Windows 7 has about 50 processes after you've installed all the Fujitsu, Fujitsu stuff. If I can just check that right now, 50, oh sorry, 66 processes. So this is not running a light operating system. Uh, and one gig seems to be okay. Um, just go over those specs again then. It's a 1.6 gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of RAM, 120 gig drive in this, 1280 by 1024. Oh, I'm have to check, sorry, I'm gonna have to check the, uh, the resolution. I'll put it up on the uh, screen. It's just super high resolution. In fact, you have to pump some of the uh, font sizes up in, in Windows to, to be able to read them. I'm using uh, the, the 120 DPI setting here. Uh, I've also had to change some, some Windows uh, features as well to be able to use them with, with Finger. But once you've done that, everything's uh, pretty usable. 5.6 inch screen, it's a uh, light touch, glossy screen, fingerprint reader, the auto rotate feature, very well built, superbly engineered and, and thought out, great battery life which ranges from, well if you push it really hard you will get it under three hours, uh, especially watching some, some videos that are decoded by CPU, uh, you'll get uh, two and a half hours or or more out of a hardware decoded uh, high-end H.264 video which will look absolutely superb on this screen. Great accessory pack, I've used it with the docking station, there's also a VGA out adapter dongle as well. Webcam seems to work. All in all, really well engineered device and um, to be honest I wish Windows 7 had come earlier because it's actually changed this from what was uh, sometimes a little bit annoying device with Windows Vista and a device that I wanted to install XP on to a device that's really uh, taken a great step forward now with uh, with Windows 7 Release Candidate 1. So this is uh, Steve Payne, Chippy from umcportal.com with the Fujitsu Lux UB50N also known as the U820 and the uh, U2010 uh, loan to us uh, from Conix.net. Take a look at their website. They've got the 2 gigahertz version of this with an SSD option now, which is going to be pretty much the ultimate uh, uh, in multi-use, multi-scenario uh, UMPCs. Don't know if I like the Tokidoki uh, cover on it, but uh, certainly draws a lot of attention. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.